Hi, welcome to Earth Angel TV, the show created by Earth Angels for Earth Angels. I'm Michelle Gordon and I'm the author of the Earth Angel series and Where's My Fucking Unicorn? So today's episode is going to talk a little bit about food. <laughs> now if you follow me on Instagram, um, which I would highly recommend doing because I do post some quite funny things sometimes, um, I do post about food a fair amount, I would say, because food is a fairly big part of my life, although I don't make it into a big part of my life. It's kind of a strange thing. So basically I have been a vegetarian my entire life. I never um, liked the taste of meat as a baby, as a child. I used to spit it out and refuse to eat it. So my parents just allowed me to be vegetarian because I was a very fussy, so-called fussy eater. And um, I just didn't want any meat. So they just didn't feed me meat. And it was quite nice actually, they didn't try and force me to eat it. And in fact, as a family, we became vegetarian because we made friends with another family who were mostly vegetarian. So it just kind of followed. And to be fair, back then meat was pretty expensive. So it just kind of made sense. So I've been vegetarian my whole life. And then about 10 years ago, nine years ago, coming up to 10 years ago, um, I became gluten intolerant. Now that had happened several years before that, um, so I'd say about seven years before that, I'd gone through about an eight month stint where I couldn't tolerate gluten and then gradually I was able to eat it again and then about yeah, nine and a half to ten years ago um, I suddenly again became gluten intolerant, couldn't eat gluten anymore because I would have a fairly nasty reaction to it won't go into details because you don't need to know that. But um, it did mean that I had to kind of change my eating habits and being vegetarian and gluten free was pretty tricky. Um, but as anybody who's got a gluten sensitivity of any kind knows, quite often what follows is a dairy sensitivity as well. So for the last, I don't know how many years now, three, four years, I haven't really kept count, I've avoided almost all dairy, milk, cheese, butter, yogurt. Um, I've avoided all those kinds of things because it does have a very interesting effect on my body, which again, you don't really need to know. But it does mean that um, my diet is fairly restrictive, but I don't necessarily see it as being restrictive. I have to admit it's getting a lot easier to eat out. Um, and especially, yeah, more recently, vegan food, gluten-free food, you know, it's more menus, more places are catering up because so many people are having similar issues. And uh, what I wanted to say in this episode really was listen to your body, get in tune with your body and like listen to what works for you because it's so difficult with all the advice out there of what's the best diet for whatever and every single person is different and every single body is different and what somebody else can tolerate I can't or what I can tolerate somebody else can't. So really get to know your own body and if you're having symptoms of like IBS or just feeling bloated or whatever, look at what you're eating because honestly I know that most of the medical profession don't see food as a big deal, it's like oh eat whatever you want, doesn't matter. Food is just a huge deal when it comes to your health and well-being. I mean I've read studies that say that the stomach could actually be the sort of root cause, you know, what's going on in your stomach could be the root cause of depression, you know, if the, if things aren't right, you know, with the digestion, then it causes these kind of mental health issues. So food is actually really important, but what's really, really important is getting to know your own body and listening to yourself and understanding what is right for you, because it's not, there is no one size fits all. It just doesn't happen like that. And so really for, you know, the last few years I've been sort of like mostly on a plant-based diet. Um, sometimes I'll say, you know, I, I do eat, you know, entirely vegan. Um, but there are some things that I still have, you know, if there's, if there are eggs in something, but it's gluten-free and it's dairy-free and I'm hungry, I have to say, I eat it. I don't buy eggs or use eggs in anything myself. If I'm baking, then I'll use chia seed. Um, so if everything's kind of homemade, it's completely gluten-free and vegan, but if I'm out somewhere and I need something to eat, then if there's egg in it, then I kind of, I'll eat it. Because otherwise it's a choice of that or get really hungry. <laughs> um, but on in terms of the environmental and ethical and moral standpoint on being vegan, you know, the more that I see um, about how animals are treated, about how food is created, you know, is it really worth it? 
you know, is it really worth that pain and suffering that that creature has gone through just so that you can have your Sunday roast? You know, but that again is something that you need to personally decide. I'm not here evangelizing any particular way of life, I'm just saying that it really is about getting to know your own body, it's about getting to know yourself and really knowing what is healthy for you um, and what is good for the planet as a whole as well. And yeah, I you have to say when it comes to my diet there is not a lot of willpower involved because a lot of people say oh well I'd become vegan but I'd miss this and this and this, too much of cheese. Um, and you know, I would say the same to be honest, but I haven't really had much choice in the matter. My body decided it will not tolerate those things and if I do eat those things it will make me regret it. So there's not really a whole lot of willpower involved and that's why I don't sort of say oh you must do this, you must do that because actually I have zero willpower, uh, you know, there's just no way that I'd be like right I'm just going to give this up if it was something I genuinely loved and didn't have any ill effects and I think it's a lot easier to give stuff up when it's actually physically harming you and you can see the aftermath of that. You don't really want to see the aftermath of that, that's not really what I meant. Anyway, glossing over. Um, so yeah, if there's like an actual physical consequence to you for eating something, it's a lot easier to give up. But when it's something kind of abstract, it's a lot more difficult. But really, get to know your body. When you're eating or drinking certain things, how does it sit? How does it feel? How does it digest? I find one of the things that I've noticed, because occasionally I go through spates where different foods agree with me and sometimes they don't, and if I can taste the food hours later or the next day, didn't agree with me. Most food, you know, you eat it, you digest it, it goes down, that's it. But if I can still taste it in my mouth, it's, it's not agreeing with me. So really just get to know your own body, get to know what works for you and what doesn't. And yeah, become more aware of where food is coming from, become more aware of how myth become more aware of the nutrients that you're getting, because the nutrients are really, really important for your growth, for your mental health and well-being, um, for your digestion, for your heart. And we want you on this planet as long as humanly possible, so really do take good care of yourself because you deserve to be taken good care of. So get to know your body and look at what you're eating. Read the packets. I have to admit, I read the packets of every single thing I buy, even if it's in the free from aisle, because there are still things that they're sneaking in that are really not good for us. You know, I am monosodium glutamate and all those sorts of things that, you know, glucose, fructose, syrup, <laughs> um, it's all stuff that we don't need in our bodies, we shouldn't be putting into our bodies, but they sneak them into foods and package them um, so prettily that we think, oh that looks tasty, we'll just eat that. Um, so really start to get to know what's in your food, where it's coming from, and what your body likes, because it is actually really important, and I think the more interest we take in this kind of thing, the more awareness we have around it, the more things will change because if people stop buying things, they will start making them um, or they will change recipes and make them in a way that's more healthy. So yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and please tell me what you feel about your dietary needs or how you feel about people expressing their views on diet. Um, I have to admit, it's a sensitive subject for a lot of people and I've been quite sensitive about, you know, I've had people telling me that oh, you're not really gluten intolerant and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, if you could be there for the aftermath, you might change your mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me know how you feel about this subject and this topic and whether you yourself have found that you feel better without certain foods and that you found something that works for you. So I will see you again next week. Until then, go eat some fruit. <laughs>